this year's offensive tackle class for the NFL draft is probably the deepest I have seen in my eight years as an NFL talent evaluator. Uh, and I definitely think that <laughs> sitting at in the round, second round here for the Washington Commanders, they have picked number 36 and number 40. There's going to be somebody there for the Commanders to take that I think is going to be a long-term starter for this team in the trenches for years to come. Before we get into my offensive tackle rankings today and which offensive tackle prospects this team should target in round two of the NFL draft or beyond, make sure you guys click that thumbs up icon for more positional ranking videos right here on the Commander's Report. We already have an edge rusher one on the channel. You can check that one out after today's show. Uh, but make sure you guys click that thumbs up icon if you want us to keep giving you this type of content. All right, so now let's go over the current situation with the offensive line for the Washington Commanders. Right now, Cornelius Lucas is slated to be your starting left tackle. And listen, man, I like Lucas. I think he's a good swing tackle. He came in and played pretty darn well when uh, Charles Leno Jr. was dealing with some injuries last year. But he's not going to be your franchise left tackle. All right, and then Andrew Wiley... Gave him that big contract last year. It probably doesn't make sense to bench him or anything like that. But he's somebody, you know, that didn't have a great season last year either. So there's definitely room here for the commanders to upgrade at the position. And I think they absolutely need to try and find somebody that could be their franchise left tackle in the second round of this year's NFL draft. Now, here's a key note that you guys need to be keeping in mind. Washington's going to be taking a quarterback at number two overall in the first round. Okay, so you're probably not going to get the guys that are going to be going in round one this year, and which is okay, at least this year, because in most years, this would be a problem, all right? Most years, you have to take an offensive tackle in round one if you plan for him to start relatively early in his career. Here uh, in 2024, though, this is a very deep tackle class. There's lots of good players at this position, and I have a feeling that by pick number 36 in round two, there's still going to be a really good player for the commanders to take there in the second round. So I'm going to be going over my top five offensive tackles here because there's just no way, in my opinion, that any of them fall to round two. All right, Joe Alt is my number one guy out of Notre Dame. He's the most complete offensive tackle prospect in this year's draft class. All right, he's excellent as a run blocker and pass protector. He's got the body that you look for in physical profile. His dad is a Hall of Fame tackle uh, in the National Football League. He's got the pedigree you look for. He's going to be a bona fide top 10 pick, might even sneak into the top five as well. Then I like Alou Fashano from Penn State. He might be the best overall pass protecting left tackle in this year's draft class. Really clean uh, film there in that regard. Still needs to work a little bit on the run blocking element of his game, but I think that's going to come in time. He's still super young. All these different things. I like Fashano's upside. Then Troy Fotano. Uh, there are some people saying that he was going to be a guard only in the National Football League. I disagree with that. He's got enough arm length to survive on the outside. Uh, he was absolutely fantastic as a left tackle there with the Huskies. He's got great mobility, great mirroring ability, and he uses his hands extremely well. He is a top 15 pick as well, in my opinion. And then Amarius Mims and Talisi Fuwaga are the best right tackle prospects in this year's draft class, I don't think either of them have a, a, a snowball's chance in hell in making it out of the first round. And like I said, guys, none of these guys are going to fall. All right, so these are the top five guys. I have bona fide first-round grades on them. And if they're available in round two, the Washington Commanders should absolutely sprint the card up at number 36 overall because I do think these guys are immediate starters and contributors in the National Football League. So who's the best offensive tackle? in this year's NFL draft class. Let me know down there in the comments section for today's pinned comment. YouTube's going to throw an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When that happens, take advantage of that time by letting me know who your number one offensive tackle is in this year's draft class. Now we get to the guys that could potentially fall to the commanders in round two, starting with J.C. Latham out of Alabama. Now there's a, a very good chance Latham ends up getting taken in round one as well. He's got he's a behemoth of a human being, man. Absolutely huge, mauling run blocker. Now, the reason why I say that he might slip to the second round is because he's still a little bit raw as a pass protector, which is why I have a late round one grade on him. And it's definitely possible he is there at number 36. Now, if you were if I were a betting man, I would say he's probably gone by then, but there is a chance that the commanders could take Latham at the top of round two. Then number seven on my list, I have Tyler Guyton, somebody that's extremely raw. He did not have a good week 
at the Senior Bowl. I know people like Daniel Jeremiah were calling him a winner because he he was he, I mean he was moving extremely well and the measurements were really good. He's got super long arms, an incredible frame, and he moves extremely well. If he hits, he's going to be probably an all-pro right tackle in the National Football League. The question is, is he going to hit and is he going to develop? Uh, so he's got super high upside, but he definitely has a lot of bust potential as well. So keep that in mind with Tyler Guyton. Then at number eight, Jordan Morgan out of Arizona. A very solid left tackle prospect coming out of the Wildcats. Now, I don't think Morgan is ever going to be an all-pro. I don't know if he's ever going to be a top five or maybe even top ten offensive tackle in the National Football League. I don't know if he has that upside, but he's very solid in his technique. He's going to be somebody that can survive as a left tackle in the league right away. And if you're looking for somebody to come in and play right away and you know hold his own on an NFL field for the next five to 10 years, Jordan Morgan is probably your guy. I got a round two grade on him. Then we got Kieran, and this is going to be a tough one, man. Um, Hameji? Um, um, a mega DJ? I mean, I don't, I don't know, man, but I got a round two grade on him. He's out of Yale, uh, and he's somebody that I think, like Jordan Morgan, has a lot of experience. He's pretty clean. Maybe doesn't have the high-end upside as some of the guys in my top five, but he's somebody they could probably grab to be a legitimate NFL tackle from day one, all right? So I, he's not the biggest upside guy in the world, and he's got a name that I would definitely have to learn if he came to the Washington Commanders, but I do have a round two grade on him as well. And then to round out my top 10 here, I got 10 tackles with a round two grade or higher, and we're going to finish it out with Blake Fisher here, who, like Jordan Morgan and Kieran, he is somebody that's ready to play right away, in my opinion. I think that he's got good film, maybe not great film. He still has a little bit of a ways to go in terms of his development, but he's got all the physical upside that you want. Plus, he's got uh, plus he's got pretty darn good film as well. You know, he's probably a right tackle only. I don't know if he can move over to the left side, which is why he's tenth. Whereas Morgan and Kieran can play on the left side, so they get the edge a little bit there. But I really like Blake Fisher. Could really love to see him in a Washington Commanders uniform. Now, before I get into the rest of my list today, go ahead and check out our friends at Fanatics. And listen, man, the Dan Quinn era is here. And we know Dan Quinn loves to rock that backwards hat on the sidelines. I don't know if he's going to be doing it for the Commanders now that he's head coach. But, man, you can rock this look on game days, and you would look damn good. All right, so you can go to chatsports.com slash DQ right now to get a Commanders ball cap on sale right now from our friends at Fanatics. And you can be ready to rock that backwards hat look during Commander's Game Days this year. You can lock that in right now by going to chatsports.com slash DQ. If you use that link, Fanatics will know that we sent you. Then we get to the final three on my top 13 here. Round three grade for Christian Jones out of Texas. Now, like Blake Fisher, he's probably just a right tackle only. But he had arguably the best week. Uh, of any tackle at the Senior Bowl this year, I thought he played with really good technique. He won more of the one-on-ones than some of the other tackles, including Tyler Guyton, who's above him on this list. I think if you're looking for somebody that can plug in as either a swing tackle or as you're maybe even starting right tackle to start right away, I think Christian Jones is pretty darn good out of Texas, and I would trust him on an NFL field. Then the final two guys here, I'm you know they're kind of more higher upside guys, potential starters. But, you know, I have serious doubts about their ability to develop. We'll start with Patrick Paul here out of Houston. Long arms, big frame, good athlete, all that stuff is there. The tape is not, all right? The technique is definitely all over the place. Too many holding penalties. Uh, he's got a long, long, long way to go before he is a starting capable tackle in the league, but a lot of teams around the league are going to look at his athletic upside and bet on that relatively early in this year's draft. I'm giving him a round three grade. And then Kingsley Asua Matai, I, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, I think I probably nailed it there. Coop is, uh, producer Coop is uh, nodding at me here. Uh, so I have a, th a round three grade on him because similar to Patrick Paul, good athletic profile, massive human being, all right? And he's got the upside to potentially play on the left side as well in the National Football League. However, he does have a long way to go, just like Patrick Paul, at least in my opinion, in terms of his technique, his footwork, his hand placement, all that stuff that you need these guys uh, in order to win. Uh, at the NFL level, the edge rushers and their finesse moves and all the moves that they bring to the table are just too good to survive at left tackle with the way Kingsley 
plays the game right now. So I have a round three grade on him. But if you're a team that's in need of potentially a long-term option and a developmental left tackle, I think Sua Mataya is somebody to consider. And my top three targets for the Washington Commanders specifically here. Jordan Morgan out of Arizona would be my number one choice because even though he doesn't have like the super high upside of somebody like, I don't know, a, a, a Troy Photon or a Lou Fashanu, I think he's somebody that can survive as a starting left tackle in the National Football League right away. And as we all know, that's what the commanders need. Plus, I think there's a pretty decent chance that he is sitting there at number 36. So I think right now, if he's there at number 36, you still need a left tackle for the future for this team. I think I'm probably pulling the trigger on Jordan Morgan. Then we got Kieran out of Yale. I, I would certainly take him if he's there as, as well, probably at pick number 40. Uh, I think that he's a good player, can play on either side of the line. Uh, and I think that he's a very solid player overall that I could trust on an NFL field. And then Blake Fisher. I, 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 I really like Blake Fisher's game, man. When I watched his film, when I watch his film now, I see somebody that is an NFL tackle, and he's going to get there, all right? He still has a little bit of these minor coaching points that he needs to get better at. But overall, his film is pretty clean for somebody that's expected to go on day two, and he's got all the physical upside that you want for somebody that's going to be entering the NFL this year. All right, so now tell me. Let me know down there in the comment section which offensive tackle do you want the Washington Commanders to draft this year? Let me know down there in the comment section which guy you're hoping is there for the Commanders to take in the middle round of the NFL draft this year. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Again, make sure you click that thumbs up icon if you want to see more of these positional rankings right here on the Commanders Report. So make sure you click that subscribe button right now for more extensive Commander's Draft content all throughout the 2024 offseason.